Father's Day 2023 wasn't exactly a happy time for former football player turned Hollywood icon John Amos. Instead of celebrating with his friends and family, John found himself taking to social media to claim that he was suffering from elder abuse at the hands of his very own daughter. The even crazier part about this whole situation is that it was his daughter Shannon who claimed John was being abused in the first place. But before I dig into the background of all this family drama unfolding, first a little bit of background on John and where he's lived. John Amos was born way back when, in 1939 in Newark, New Jersey. Raised in East Orange, he graduated from high school in his home state before moving to Long Beach in California and eventually graduating from Colorado State University with a degree in sociology. Come to think of it, that degree might finally come in handy in the near future, considering the the family dynamics he's dealing with right now, but as a young adult, John made a living in a different field entirely, football. In 1964, John signed as a free agent with the Denver Broncos, but he was let go on only his second day after pulling a hamstring. Over the next few years, he played for a number of different teams in a number of professional leagues, including for a short period with the Kansas City Chiefs. Rather than become famous for his prowess on the field, John found himself as a surprise rising TV star after being cast as Henry Evans Sr. on the 70s CBS sitcom Maud. That character would eventually be renamed and go on to appear full time in the hit series Good Times. But John found himself unhappy with how the comedy undercut his desire to provide a positive image of an African American family making the best out of living in a poor neighborhood. As a result, John was eventually not only fired from the show, but in an unusual twist of events for a sitcom he was killed off. Afterwards, he appeared as the iconic Kunta Kinte in the Milestone series Roots. And it was also right around that time that John bought his first piece of property in his home state of New Jersey. John Amos bought himself a ranch-style estate in the semi-rural area of Tewksbury Township in the state of New Jersey in 1990 for the low price of just $337,000. Originally constructed out of brick and cedar in 1968, this home hasn't seen many updates over the years and still boasts four bedrooms as well as three and a half bathrooms on a 4.19 acre parcel of land with just over 3,200 square feet of space. This property might very well need a complete overhaul, but back when John used to live here, it featured main floor living spaces with multi-pane sash windows as well as wide plank hardwood flooring. Elsewhere on the main floor, you'll discover adjoining living and dining rooms that are accompanied by an Eden kitchen that includes some of the most beat up looking kitchen appliances I've ever seen in a house that's for sale. At least two of the bathrooms in the home sport some original tile work, one of which has been done up in baby blue, while the other has been bathed in a lemon yellow. Meanwhile, down on the basement level, there's a sunken family room that boasts chunky wooden beams on the ceiling, a massive room-wide reclaimed brick fireplace, glass sliders with access to the backyard, and convenient access to the home's two-car garage. Want to guess how long John lived here for? Well, if you guessed near 30 years, then you're right. This became John's home base for the next three decades before he eventually listed the home for sale in 2016, with the condition that it be sold as is. I mean, at least he was offering the property for a steal at only $439,000. Problem was, no one wanted it, not even for that discount. Two years later, John's home slipped into foreclosure and in April 2021, his bank sold the property for even less than he originally paid for in the early 90s, just $288,000. Following this move, it's believed that Amos began splitting his time between Baja, California and Memphis, Tennessee. But it's what recently happened in Memphis that has John's name all over the headlines once again. In one of the strangest twists of recent memory, John Amos has found himself in the center of some bizarre family drama involving his kids. This tale first began a few weeks ago when John's daughter Shannon publicly declared that her father was a victim of elder abuse, neglect, and financial exploitation. She didn't go into further details, but would allude to the fact that the perpetrator was believed to have been a trusted caregiver. Shannon then started a GoFundMe page on behalf of her father, insinuating that he was fighting for his life in an ICU while seeking 
seeking to raise $500,000 to assist her father catch and prosecute the offenders who did this to him. Only the offender turned out to be Shannon herself. Shortly after his daughter came forward with these claims, John would speak out to refute it all, telling TMZ that while he was hospitalized with heart problems last month in Memphis, the suggestion that he was fighting for his life was greatly exaggerated. The bombshells weren't enough yet because shortly after, John would take to social media to reveal the only person guilty of elder abuse was the one crying wolf in the first place, his daughter Shannon. John has no idea why Shannon decided to make up the things that she has, let alone why she set up a GoFundMe that's already raised as much as $13,000 with over 300 donations, none of which that he needs. In a video that he filmed with the help of his son Casey, Amos told his fans that he was hospitalized for a matter unrelated to what's going on with his daughter. According to him, the majority of these health issues have been corrected and his son has assembled a proper medical staff to take care of him. Now his primary concern is his daughter who he has admitted to having some ongoing issues with and who he believes has been taking advantage of him. John refused to go into specifics in terms of what has happened between himself and Shannon, but he's since told People Magazine that he's doing well and expects the donations made to GoFundMe to be returned to the people who made them as soon as possible. As for Shannon, a representative of hers would also reach out to People Magazine to tell them, Miss Amos is disheartened at the continuation of false and defamatory statements being made against her by or on behalf of or in connection with news reports based on social media posts by Mr. Kelly Casey Amos. She is exploring all legal remedies available to her. Miss Amos hopes that this matter will be resolved soon through the proper authorities. So it doesn't really sound like this problem is going to disappear anytime soon. It's possible that John's daughter was just looking for a quick payday, but it's also possible that there's more going on with this family drama than meets the eye. Maybe this is the beginning of the story. In the meantime, that's going to bring this latest edition of House Tour to a close. Thanks so much for watching and before you head out, consider answering the following question. What is the biggest disagreement you've ever had with one of your your parents. Let me know about the biggest blowout you've had with one of your folks or guardians in the comments below. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications to never miss an episode. My name's Kara. If you'd like to check out the family and home life of another celebrity from yesteryear, then stay tuned because I'm about to take you inside the property profile of Aretha Franklin. I'll see you next time. Bye! Aretha Franklin didn't only capture audiences' attention with her amazing voice and timeless music, her talents extended to her eye for properties as we can see in her real estate portfolio. The late Queen of Soul owns a few magnificent estates over her lifetime, each with their own character. Aretha's residences were more than mere investments, they were the embodiment of her passion for creating spaces that inspire and uplift. Her properties served as havens of creativity and providing a getaway from the world. Beyond the glittering stages and Recording studios, Aretha's real estate endeavors allowed her to shape her surroundings, and she also chose to continue calling her native Detroit, Michigan home, no matter where her career took her. At the end of 2022, one of Aretha's homes popped back on the market for around $1 million, which was dubbed her Rose Estate, and in 2019, one of her other former homes was listed, this one located in the Bloomfield Hills area. Aretha Franklin was a singer, songwriter, actress, civil rights activist, and more who passed away at age 76 in 2018. She grew up singing gospel music in a Detroit church where her father was pastor and signed her first recording contract at age 18. Despite this, Aretha didn't even reach her mega success until she switched to Atlantic Records in the late 60s. By the end of the 1960s, she was known as the queen of soul and as one of the best-selling music artists of all time, having sold over 75 million records. Aretha's career will outlive her for decades and centuries to come um, so it shouldn't be a surprise that the singer left behind a substantial estate when she passed. It's assumed she was worth anywhere between 18 to 80 million dollars, but unfortunately she died without a will, leaving her estate in question. In 2019, one of Aretha's longtime homes came up on the market for $800,000, and then after being taken off the market, it returned with a respectable price increase to $1.2 million. Located in the suburb of Bloomfield Hills, the estate 
was just outside of Aretha's native Detroit, Michigan, about a 30 minute drive from downtown. The mini mansion is situated in the hills of Lone Pine gated community. And Bloomfield Hills is quite the upscale neighborhood. Aretha's colonial style home boasted 4,148 square feet of space with five beds and seven baths throughout. The music legend bought the property in 1997. And when the home first popped up on the market, it hadn't been lived in for quite a long while, according to agents. When it came back up for sale at the higher price, it offered a new look and was fixed up with a tasteful remodel. The circular driveway leads you to the home's courtyard entrance and the lot overlooks a community pool, two beautiful ponds, which we can see in aerial views. Inside there's an elegant two-story entry hall with marble floors and a crystal chandelier, which opens up to the two-level great room. Here there was a granite fireplace, floor to ceiling windows, a web bar, and at the time, Aretha's red grand piano, which would later be auctioned off. While the home was upgraded and modernized, it maintained a classic feel, along with much of the original features from when Aretha lived there. Queen of Soul also loved to cook. And while the gourmet kitchen was fresh and polished with white cabinets, black granite counters, and an oversized island, they were able to keep Aretha's original appliances. There was also a breakfast snook and a sub-zero fridge was added according to listing materials. Even the stylist who staged this home said whoever is so lucky to get this space will be cooking in the Queen of Souls kitchen. The formal dining room had a stunning custom chandelier overhead that Aretha owned and loved, which used to be in one of her other residences, and was brought here to add more of her style. Also on this level of the home, there was a cozy library with wood accents and the stately master retreat. Aretha's master bedroom featured the original floors and attached marble bath, as well as a private deck and two spacious walk-in closets. Another special detail is the floral shower surrounding the master bath that was custom made for Aretha. It's the same shower that this queen used to sing in. There's an upper level of the estate that has a bridge, as well as two large bedrooms with en suites. Downstairs, there's a finished walkout lower floor with plenty of space to entertain. This level of the home boasts a family room with fireplace, kitchenette, second master guest suite with attached bath and sauna, another guest room, and an office. Aretha's former property backs onto the community amenities, which include a pool, tennis court, clubhouse, stunning ponds, and even a walking trail. Home itself has elevated decks as well to soak up the views. Next, we can take a look at Aretha Franklin's other former home. This property was sprawling and impressive, but unfortunately, it was in a state of disrepair at the time of sale, so it went for the low price of 300K. It was purchased by a real estate developer, Anthony O'Kellum, who decided decided to work on renovating the place, rent it out for an event, and then sell it. At least that's what his plan was. A year later in 2019, the house popped back on the market, this time for $600,000. Dubbed the Queen of Souls Rose Estate, it was in rough shape the first time it was sold. And the Tudor Mansion needed new heating and electrical systems, as well as roof repairs. A circular driveway leads to the front of the mansion, which sits on a private road with 24 hours security across from Detroit's Palmer Woods Historic District. Aretha purchased the five bedroom, four bath house with an attached three car garage back in 1994. The singer lived here when she recorded her Grammy nominated album, A Rose is Still a Rose. The first buyer, Kellum, said he planned extensive kitchen and master bath renovations, but it was unclear how much work had actually been carried out on the home. Built in 1927, Aretha's other former estate was located on the lavish Detroit Golf Club, backing up on to the seventh hole. Kellum at the time of purchase said that he was an Aretha fan and when she passed, it hit him hard, especially since his late mother used to sing to the singer all the time. The house had been vacant for some time and he estimated renovations would cost around 350K. He said, I can see this as an opportunity to not only revitalize an iconic property in the city I love, but knowing how proud my mom would be if she were still here makes this even more amazing. While we don't know the full list of renovations, that ended up being done, we can hope that they preserved some of Aretha's touches in the mansion. Her former Detroit Golf Club estate spanned 6,200 square feet inside and was full of potential. While it was in disrepair, the home still kept many of its stately features, like wooden mantles, interior French doors, leaded glass windows, and a slate roof. There are some really nice features of the property that were classic, like the beams and the archways inside, as well as the soaring ceilings. This Centerpiece and main attraction, though, of Aretha's former home, 
seems to be the great room with 30 foot arch ceilings, which spans 32 by 17 feet and boasts a rose colored crystal chandelier. In fact, Aretha's love for roses shows in this entire mansion from the wallpaper to the fixtures and even the carpet where we see this large imprinted rose in the carpet of the great room. There's an outdated kitchen, but it still had plenty of space should it be upgraded and also a beautiful sunroom, which listing materials called the Solaria. This space had stone arched walls and overlooked both the terrace and golf course outside. The first level of Aretha's home is complete with a formal dining room, family room, library, and breakfast nook attached to the kitchen. The central staircase leads up to a private master retreat on the north side of the mansion that features a bedroom, sprawling master bath, dressing room, and elsewhere there's two separate bedrooms that share a bathroom. At the time this home was listed, you could still see the Queen of Souls unique style throughout and a couple of her artifacts were present. These include her quilted pink bed in the master bedroom and a lot of that rose wallpaper. There is even a bathroom with roses painted all over. On the south side of the mansion, two more sprawling bedrooms connect with a bathroom that had multicolored tiles covering the entire space from the walls to the floor, while another bathroom boasted a red tub and fireplace. Most recently, this home was seen back on the market in December 2022, first being listed at $1.2 million and then dropping the price to $975,000. Since we've looked at a couple of the legendary Aretha Franklin's one-time homes in Detroit, that'll bring today's house tour to a close. But before we go, answer this question for me. Would you stay as dedicated to your roots as Aretha did with her hometown of Detroit? Let me know in the comments below if you choose to move somewhere completely different. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram to chat.